In the previous two episodes, we've looked at how a trend filter can be used to turn the probabilities in your favor. But this will only work effectively when you properly synchronize the trend filter with a trigger to manage trade execution. And it's this synchronization of the time frames between the filter and the trigger that we'll look at in this episode. After this, you'll be equipped to build a trend filter into your own systems to hopefully see those improvements that we've talked about. Stay tuned. Now, the type of indicator that I chose to focus our attention on was the type with two lines. And the specific example was the Arun indicator. And we looked at the underlying premise or the reason this works well as a trend filter. And also we looked at the calculation behind it. And as I explained last time, it's a really simple calculation, which I like in any indicator. We then took a look at some real charts to illustrate how the indicator worked and how it gives us the information about firstly the trend direction, but also the trend strength. And so now we're going to look at the use of this indicator in conjunction with a trigger. And so we're going to stick with the trigger we've been using so far, which is the stochastic. So in the top half of the screen here, you can see the price action on the one hour chart with the Arun indicator displayed. And in the bottom region, you can see the price action of the M15 chart and the stochastic indicator. Now, the important thing to note here is that we're looking at the same period of time. So if you notice the thick red bars either side, they're drawn on each chart on the same date at the same time. So the only difference between the two price action charts is that we've got four times as many bars on the M15 as we have on the one hour. So let's focus in now on a few areas of interest on the chart. So here, the Arun indicator has classified this region as being in a downtrend. And we can see that because the down line or the red line of the indicator is predominantly above the 70 level. But on the rare occasion it does dip below that, it still stays above 50. And so this is a great indication that we're in a downtrend. And so let's now take a look at the triggers and see what impact this has. So if, for example, we were using a trigger that went from either overbought into neutral, so when it crossed this line, or oversold into neutral, so when it crossed the line here, it's no longer able to trade on both of those scenarios. It can now only trade when the price goes from overbought into neutral. And this one from oversold into neutral is disallowed. Let's now move to this area of the chart. And as you can see here, the opposite is true. Here, the up line of the Arun indicator is predominantly above the 70 level. It does come below slightly here, but as I said before, it still remains above 50. So this is a really good indication that we're now in an uptrend. Now, again, if the system that we're trading is based on a trend following premise, then we shouldn't be trading in any market conditions that are not either an uptrend or a downtrend. And that's what these regions are. And again, the Arun indicator has done a really good job here of classifying the market. So as you can see, because it's not saying that we're in an up or a down trend, look at the price action. We're in a flat trading range. If we look here, slightly different, but still no strong trend. And if you look on the left here, again, there's no predominant trend in either direction. So we're making good progress now through our journey of looking at the different ways that indicators can be used. And we've now completed our analysis of oscillators for the purpose of triggers, volatility filters and trend filters.
But what we haven't done yet is look at how we combine all three of those components together into a single trading system. And so that's going to be the topic of the next episode. And just so that you know where we're going with this in the future, we're then going to start looking at trend following indicators. So as I said, we've just focused entirely on oscillators. And by looking at trend following indicators as well, opens up a whole area of new opportunity in terms of building trading systems. So if that next episode where we're going to look at the combination of the trigger volatility filter and trend filter is available now, you'll see a link to it right here. If not, remember to subscribe so that you get notified when it is available. Please remember to give me a like for the video if you've got value from it. And until next time, trade safe.